So this is your the last trump. Look at 1 Corinthians chapter 15. And if you, you go down to verse number 50, okay? 1 Corinthians 15, 50, Paul says, Now this I say, brethren, that flesh, excuse me, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, neither doth corruption inherit incorruption. Now what does Paul say cannot inherit the kingdom of God? Flesh and blood, right? Now, let me ask you guys this. Flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. So, let me ask you this. When the Lord sets up his earthly kingdom, are there going to be any people in that kingdom who have flesh and blood? I'm talking about on the earth. On the earth. Will any people have flesh and blood on the earth? Here's not. <laughs> not an earthly kingdom. Yeah. It's going to be a lot of people. All the Gentiles are going to have flesh and blood. Some of the Jewish people will because they're going to be giving birth. They're going to have babies. So here's the question. Paul just says, Flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. So what, what's the question we need to ask? What's the kingdom? What, which one? In the beginning, God created. What's Genesis 1-1? One, one? In the beginning, God created the what? The heaven and the earth. And from Genesis 1, Genesis 1 verse 2, he only focused on and the earth. Because in prophecy... God is focused on the earthly kingdom. But that's not what the Apostle Paul is talking about in this passage. He's not talking about the kingdom of God on earth. He's talking about the one in the heavenly, the heavenly kingdom. 2 Timothy 4.18 many, many of the people in the earthly kingdom, all the Gentiles, most of the Israel, particularly the ones who are going to be still having babies, they're going to be multiplying Abraham's seed. Now, will there be some who have who, who, who have glorious glorified earthly bodies? Yes, but those are just one one category, brother, and that's these the ones who are resurrected. If you're resurrected into that kingdom, you won't be flesh and blood; you'll be flesh and bone like Christ. But if you're not resurrected, or and my wife mentioned, some of them are gonna walk into the kingdom. Do y'all remember when the Lord said this? There'll be some standing here. Who shall not taste of death till they see the Son of Man taste of death, till they see the Son of Man come in his kingdom. There had had the had had the dispensation of grace not been ushered in by the Father. There were men who Jesus Christ spoke to during his earthly ministry who would have been alive after he went. I think it would be about 17 years, but he would have went away, died, buried, rose again ascended he would have went away for some years and returned there were men that he was speaking of who speaking to who would have would have been there the only reason that didn't come to fulfillment my wife had a question before she learned right division she wondered that the lord was that a lie what's going on there because she 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 understood that didn't come to pass the reason it didn't come to pass is god brought in the mystery dispensation of grace but had god not brought in the mystery there were men, there were some standing there who heard the Lord who would not have died. They would walk into his kingdom. So, Krista, you're right. Some would walk into the kingdom. Okay? So, but there will be flesh and blood on that earthly kingdom. That's not what the Apostle Paul's talking about. Look at verse 50. Now, this I say. Now, what's the most important part of that verse? Now, this who says? I say. When Paul says, I say, he's saying this is something unique to his revelation of the, of the mystery. This is something unique to his doctrine. And what is that? That flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. Now, let me ask you guys this. Is there, is there going to be one member of the body of Christ who is in that her, uh, heavenly kingdom who is going to have flesh and blood? No. No. Because the rapture is our resurrection. 
Paul calls the rapture, 2 Timothy 2, our resurrection. We call it the rapture. That's just the way Christendom knows it, the, the catching away. But it's really our resurrection. Let's, let me show you why I say it. Look at verse 51. Behold, I show you a what? So, so brother Darnell, this information that we're about to look at with the last trump, it's not any of the trumpets of Revelation. It's not any of the, the, the other trumpets mentioned in the scripture, okay? Notice what he says. Behold, I show you a mystery. That means this is something kept secret. We shall not all sleep. And, 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 and what do you mean sleep? Physically die. But we shall all be changed. That means every member of the body of Christ. Here's what he's saying. There will be members of the body of Christ who will not die. We could be a group, the group that when the Lord returns for the body of Christ in the air. First Thessalonians four, we'll go over there in a moment in the air. Now, why does the Lord, why do we meet the Lord in the air? Because that's our sphere, right? The Lord Jesus at his return and prophecy is going to come where? To the earth. His feet shall stand upon the Mount of Olives, Zechariah. Now, we meet the Lord in the air. I'll show you that in a minute. Notice this. So there's going to be some of us who won't die physically. But all of us will be changed. Verse number 451. But we shall all be changed. In a moment. In the twinkling of an eye. That's the speed of where light touches the eye and reflects back. Let me show you something. The trumpets in Revelation is a long series of events in time, right? In fact... In my study over the years, the, tr the trumpets mentioned in Revelation, that's over the entire seven-year period of the tribulation period. That's happening throughout years. Right. Look how fast this is. In a moment. In the twinkling of an eye. At the last trump. Now, here's the problem with the other, here's the problem with the other versions of the Bible. Notice I put that because that's how they put it. The last trumpet. But did, does that verse say last trumpet? Yeah. Trump. And it defines what a trump is. Notice, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall do what? Sound. You know what the trump is? Sound. The sounding of a trumpet. The sounding of a trumpet. That's the Lord himself. Yeah. We're going to see that over there. Exactly. Mm. So this has nothing to do with all those trumpets in Revelation. It's the it's the last trump. He's calling it. He's call, it's the last one. By the way, all those seven feast days, I did a study on that, they all ended. Every last one of them, seven feast days, ended with a blowing of a trumpet. That's how they know it was, it was done. After the Passover, trumpet blow. The, the priest blew the trumpet. All, se all seven of them have a trumpet blown. But this last trump is the sound of a trumpet. Let's look at it. Verse 52. In the moment of the twinkling of eye at the last trump. And he tells you what a trump is. For the trumpet shall sound. And the dead shall be raised incorruptible. And we shall be changed. So those who have already died in Christ. They'll be raised incorruptible. Their bodies that are all corrupted in the grave. Brand new. What about us? Well, we who have these physical bodies of what Paul calls mortal, subject to death, right? Notice what it says. And we, verse 52, shall be changed. Verse 53. For this corruptible, those are the bodies that are decayed in the, in the grave of our brother and sisters, must put on what? Incorruption. Incorruption. And this mortal, that's me and you right now who are alive, but can die any moment. Mortal means subject to death. This mortal must put on what? Immortality. We'll never die. Verse number 54. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, that's the rapture resurrection, and this mortal, that's me and you, shall have put on immortality at the rapture resurrection, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, death 
is swallowed up in victory because then no one else, we won't die ever again. None of us will die. Verse 55. O death, where's thy sting? O grave, where's thy victory? That's a quote from Isaiah 55. The sting of death is sin and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. So that issue of the last trumpet, notice it's part of, excuse me, the last trumpet is part of the mystery. Right. Behold, I show you a mystery. And a mystery is something that God kept secret since the world began. <laughs> and when he says, I say, that's unique to the Apostle Paul. So everything he mentions about the rapture, uh, I remember the, in the air, go over to first, go forward to first Thessalonians chapter four. It's all part of the mystery given to the apostle. And, and for those people who take Revelation's trumpets and put it with the trumpet that Paul talks about, the trump of God, they're not rightly dividing that, those things. Right. So, you know, I love my Bible at home. This is the New King James. That's, out of, the, that's out of the hotel. Yeah. yeah. So it says, it doesn't say trump, it says trumpet. I know. I knew it. I knew it, honey. It's hard to follow me in this thing. Yeah, I bet. I know. So this issue of First Corinthians, First uh, First Thessalonians. If you look with me at um, verse number thirteen, chapter four, sorry, four thirteen. Uh, brother, this is the second passage where Paul talks about this same resurrection rapture. Verse thirteen. But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that you sorrow not even as others which have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, isn't that our gospel? I mean, the essence of the gospel of grace is we believe that Jesus died for us and rose again. That's the essence of the gospel, right? We believe that. Paul says, if you believe that, even so, even so them also which sleep in Jesus, they, they've died and, and going to be with the Lord, will God bring with him? Now, the whole point of Paul writing this passage was the saints were wondering about their loved ones. And Paul says, don't sorrow. Matthew, you know, you miss your dad. But you know, your dad, he trusted Christ, He's right? He's a believer. You know one day soon you'll be reunited with your dad. You sorrow today because it's the anniversary of tomorrow. But you... It's not this uncontrollable sobbing because you know in your spirit and your mind, you know there's, a hope. there's that blessing. You have that hope right there. Yeah. That's right. You're going to see your dad again in glory. Doesn't mean we don't sorrow, right? We just don't sorrow like those who have no hope. Because they have no hope. They have no hope of this resurrection. Okay, let's go. Verse 15. Here's some comfort. You know what, Matthew? Let's comfort one another with these words. Let's do it. Verse 15, for this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord. By the way, why does he keep calling him the Lord there? He, yes, right, because he, he called him, you, you've been paying attention. You've been paying attention. That's right. The righteous judge. Listen, he mentioned Jesus earlier. He says sleep in Jesus, right? But when he says this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, now watch how many times he says Lord, because the definition of the Lord in Scripture is the righteous judge, 2 Timothy 4. Listen, watch how he says, because what's going to happen at the rapture? The rapture is not just to take us out of this world. We go to what? Judgment the judgment seat of Christ. Christ. That's right. You're a good student. But you know, <laughs> Jerry Lynn, she paid attention, man. Yeah. Right. Uh, that's we, Lori. We, brother Ron. Oh, yeah. oh, was that Lori next time? Oh. Sorry. Uh, no, you taught us that. Either. My back was turned. Okay. Yeah. Well, both of y'all. When yeah. Brother Ron reads this verse, how, how many times the Lord. That's right. Yeah. The judgment seat of Christ. That, and that's what I want you to see, Matthew. Watch how it just, watch this. Verse 15. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord. Lord. See, he wants you to see what, what's going to happen at this event. Shall not prevent, or that means to go before, as it were, them which are asleep. For the Lord, he's constantly hitting on that righteous judge. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout. Trump. That's right. That's right. With, with the, uh, uh, from heaven with the shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the what? Trump of God. See that? 
That's going to be the blowing of, uh, it's going to be God himself. And the dead in Christ shall rise first. And notice he put Christ there, not the Lord. Mm -hmm. Ah. And Matthew, mwah. See, this is what we do. He didn't say the Lord. Because Christ, because what happened? Because he died, he suffered, and then the glory, right? And these are folks who were identified in Christ, in that suffering and glory. They're going to rise again, too. And Christ is all about rising from the dead. That's and right. Rising us from the dead. That's right. And that's why he's associated with Christ. Mm -hmm. His suffering then is rising from the dead in glory. And the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up. Don't miss that catching up because in prophecy the Lord Jesus comes down to the earth, right? Notice here, it says, then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the, what? In the clouds. I did a study recently, probably in the past few months, called His Pavilion, the Lord's Pavilion. And when the Lord travels, He travels in these clouds. It's His Pavilion. And that's where we're going to be. Shall be caught up with them in the clouds. Where are we going to meet the Lord? To meet the Lord in the air. See, that's not prophecy. That's part of the mystery. Right, right. We meet him up in the air because that's where we're at. We're, for, we're in the heavenly places. And in a symbolic that we meet him in the air and not on the earth. The earth is for Israel. We're for the heavenlies. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. There's going to be a reuniting of the body of Christ once and for all. And we'll always be with our... By the way, when he says, so shall we ever be with the Lord, do you know that the word saint means to make judgments on behalf of the Lord? We're going to be... He's the King of kings and Lord of lords, First Timothy 6, right? He will use us to make judgments. Uh, go over to First Corinthians 6. Let me show you that. See, that's why it's in capital kings, capital lord. Yeah, king of kings. King, that's right. Lord case lord. Right, because he's the capital. He's the king right. he's of the kings. Head. He's the head and Lord of lords. That's why I was telling the sister here that we're going to reign. As joint heirs, we reign with Christ. If so be we suffer with him in this message. The reason we want to keep the grace message is it is going to be our faithfulness in this is, is how it's going to determine how we reign with him in the heavenly places. Look at 1 Corinthians chapter number uh, 6. Chapter 6, verse 1. Dare any of you having a matter against another go to law? Now watch this. Before the unjust and not before the saints. Interesting that Paul says, go before the saints. Verse 2. Do you not know that the saints shall judge the world? And if the world shall be judged by you, are you unworthy to judge the smallest matters? At the great white throne judgment, we're going to be there. Sometimes saints ask me, says, Brother Ron, during that thousand year millennial when Christ is reigning in Israel with them over the Gentiles, what will we be doing in the body of Christ? I know we will be reigning in heaven, but what are, what's going to be our, what's going to be, what are we going to be doing? We're going to be preparing our minds, our, our, our souls, I guess, for the great white throne judgment. We're going to be learning how to be judges. Right. We're going to be learning the mind of Christ exactly. during that time. I want to sit with the in Apostle Paul's class that he's teaching. He says, I'll be right there. Judge, judge the, the world. world. That's the scope. That scope is the world. The world. Now, yeah. who would have a rightful right to judge the world except ye be in Christ and except ye be as a prince, like a lord or a king? Uh -huh. That's why. Are they checking in? Oh, I still got. We still, it's only three something. Yeah, exactly. So, so notice what he says here, verse number three. Know ye not that we shall judge angels? How much more things that pertain to this life? That'll be part of our ministry as well at that great white throne. Verse four. If then ye have judgments of things pertaining to this life, set them to judge who are least esteemed in the church. Paul is saying that. This issue of the saints, our job is to be judges with the Lord, to, 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 
to use his mind to make determinations. And he's saying, we're not only going to do it in this world, his goal is to let us do it in the, in the world to come as well. Exactly. We need to build up the mind of Christ through the Apostle Paul's doctrine now. That will qualify us to reign with him. But and his governments will in, continually increase, and those that's governments right. will continue to continue with the same yeah. tools of judge. You make the policy and on behalf of the Lord Jesus. What about the Zechariah? Mm. Oh, yeah. Um, Matthew. Yeah, go take it, Matthew. Okay. Just speak loud enough so they can. Uh, Brother Matthew from our assembly up in, in North, Northern California. He's, this you, is how we do our Q&As. Go ahead. 9, I want to go to verse 9, 16 first. Uh, Zechariah chapter 9. Because it says, And the Lord God shall save them in that day as the flock of his people. For that day shall be, they'll be as stones of, of a crown lifted up as an ensign upon his land. So you see the land, and you see that day. That goes. That points to you know Revelation. Zechariah right, nine fourteen. But now if you back up a little to verse fourteen, you're going to see Zechariah. Zechariah. Uh, and you're not going to see nine fourteen. It's talking about a trumpet, almost like a trumpet. Verse fourteen, and the Lord shall be seen over them, and his arrow shall go forth as the lightning, and the Lord God shall blow the trumpet, and shall go with whirlwind. Of the south. Out of now south this trumpet south, yeah. here is a. It, there's no indication that this trumpet is going to last for years, or there's many trumpets. It sounds like one trumpet, one sound. Now we just contrast that with First Corinthians 15 that we just read. We have it one sound, one trumpet. But notice the context difference between what right. we just learned and what this says. This is talking about the day of the Lord. Right. This is the day of the Lord's wrath. So and there prophecy. is a trumpet, single, but. This is the verse that shows that single trumpet is talking about the day of the Lord, so not the dead in Christ rising and things like that. Yeah. Or the mystery. And, 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 and that's what you have to do. Any, anything that Apostle Paul talks about, especially when he says, I say, or I show you a mystery, just understand that's part of the revelation of the mystery given to him by the Lord Jesus. And it's not associated, it's not connected to, to prophecy. Even if they're saying similar things the context is different yeah yeah even if you go back and point to a single trumpet this shows right. that's a good that's a good one there's a good one matthew is that right 9 14 right and, and 16 so you have the context and 16 yes mm -hmm. thank you good point um yeah you got the floor brother or you, if you guys want to chime in uh feel free but anybody um go ahead oh okay. yeah okay. um yeah the trumpet of the lord you know this is of course the trumpet that's going to signify the beginning of the day of the lord Mm -hmm. uh, because, you know, obviously, I'm sure you guys have studied the day of the Lord is the, the day of Christ. You know, that's sort of the, you know, and, and even, even, even with those, it's still the context because, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, yeah. Paul, Paul would talk about the day of the Lord mm -hmm. uh, sometimes. He'll, when, if Paul says it, he's talking about the rapture for us, the coming of the Lord for the body of Christ. Yeah. Um, but then, if, if, if prophecy, if the Old Testament prophets are talking about it, they're talking about the day of his wrath, the right. day of the Lord, mm -hmm. and when he comes in, in fierceness and indignation and anger and wrath. Yeah. Right, right. So even the, context, even, the, even the context has to tell you which day of the Lord and stuff like that. Yeah. Right. yeah. Mm -hmm. Con number one thing, uh, Ryan and I put together the 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 uh, tools of your toolbox for a Bible student. The number one tool is context. Every verse has a context. If you just take it out of the context, it could say anything. You can get the Bible say anything, but you got to look at the verses before it and after it and around it to get the context. Because I could say the day of the day of the Lord, and you have to say which day. Are you talking about prophecy? Are you talking about the mystery? Because the day of the Lord in mystery is the rapture. The day of the Lord in prophecy is the day of his wrath. Yeah. And you can take Paul's words and then go back in the Old Testament and find similar phrases. Sure. And then yeah. contrast the context and see, oh my, they're talking about different things. Oh, they're all, they're all talking about different things. Yeah. There's different things going on here. They're not the same. Right?